Hello, my name is Bruce Gibson. I'm the Occupational Health Product Manager here at Levitt Safety. And the purpose of today's demonstration is to show you the EZON PC spirometer from NDD. The EZON PC spirometer is a USB based spirometer and it plugs directly in, into any standard USB port on your PC. So to use this product, you must have a PC running at all times and connected to this device. The software that comes with this product is a non-licensed piece of software, so you're, it's quite fine to install it on multiple computers within any facility. Um, the product also comes with a disposable product, which they call the spirette, which is the mouthpiece used for, obviously, doing the test itself. What I want to show you today is how the program runs, and I'm just going to demonstrate with a patient we will select from the menu, and we're going to perform a FVC or forced vital capacity test, which is what we do in most occupational health settings. So we're at the main screen of the program, and at this point we want to select a patient to begin the testing. And as you can see here, if you have many people in the database, you can go over here and do a quick search by last name. For today, I'm going to pick someone who already is in the database and run a test on this person. Double click, and if you see down here, new test. And again, for the purposes of occupational health, we are going to do a FVC or force of vital capacity only, which is the test that we do 95% of the time. On the computer screen, it asks you to block the spirette. So to do that, I've left the cellophane in place and I select the OK function on the computer. And if you do move it, it asks you to do it again until it gets a complete zero reset. And once that's good to go, your screen will indicate a blue bar which says start test. So the te technique is to remove the bag now that we're zeroed and good to go. And every spirometry test, no matter what spirometer you're using, requires a minimum of three blows. And you have to get two of the blows within 5% of each other based on the FVC and the FEV1. The FVC being the forced vital capacity and the FEV1 being the forced expiratory volume in the first second of the test. And each one of these tests is a maximum effort test. So it's critical that the person taking the test is giving you a maximum effort. So I'm going to demonstrate that for you now. If you look over on the left, we've uh, opened up our incentive spirometry screen and what that means is it's just a visual for indicating if you've got that maximum effort out of you and in this case it'll blow out all the candles on the cake. So we're good to go and I'm going to start the test. So you take in as much air as you possibly can, seal off your nose if you want to, there is optional nose clips with this product and then you exhale the air as hard as you can, as fast as you can, and for as long as you can. And we need a minimum of a six second effort. So. Okay, and that was the first effort. And with any good spirometry test, you need to do a minimum of three blows, and two of them have to be within 5% of each other for repeatability. So it is a maximum effort test in spirometry. If you look quickly at the graph to date in my first blow, you'll see some lines on the, obviously the line on the screen where I did the test, and you'll see some dots. The dots are the predicted values, and at a glance I can tell that I'm you know, in a normal range. And, and the predicted values are based on my age, my height, my sex, and race. There's also fine dotted lines, and these are your lower levels of normal and your upper levels of normal based again on your age, height, sex, and race. So at this point we have to do two and then a third test to, to verify this data. So I'd have to add an, a second and then a third trial and then each of those will be compared and then the results of that once we've got our consistency and our repeatability it'll tell you that the session is complete and then you go to a printout of the actual results. And that's our second test. Again, it's a good effort. And of course, it wants you to do that third one. It's even indicating it on the screen, as you can see here. And just for the third test, we're going to have a little fun here. We'll show you that there's multiple incentive screens here. And we're going to go away from the cake to a young man blowing up a balloon. So I'm going to do the third effort right now. OK, 
Okay, so as you can see, the balloon <laughs> was blown up completely and exploded, which meant I've got the maximum effort required. And you can see here in the green bar, it's telling you that now the session is complete and you did a great job. So we have our minimum of three blows, and two of those, it's been verified, are within 5% of each other, which means we have good spirometry results. At this point, we'll go to a print preview, and we'll show you what a printout of the report looks like. We'll start with the top half of the test, and as you can see very quickly, all of the pertinent information for the person you've tested is on the screen, and with respect to our FBC test, the parameters that are required to get the results. And based on this person's age, height, sex, and race, what it's telling us is that their forced vital capacity, FBC, should be 5.58 liters. So my best effort in this demonstration was 5.68 liters of my three trials, which means I'm 102% of predicted. <clears throat> the second parameter that was most important in a forced vital capacity test is the FEV1, or the forced expiratory volume, in the first second of the test. And they were looking for a number here up on my predicted values of 4.26 liters. My best effort was 4.37 liters. So again, I'm approximately 102% of predicted. So we have our minimum of three blows with the consistency required. And if you look down here, it gives you a quick indicator of normal spirometry. And in the top right corner, it just indicates what interpretation methods and predicted values we're using for the test. And then the second half of the test is the graphic representation of your results. And as you can see, the top is your half of a flow volume loop, and the bottom graph is a volume time indicator, which is standard reporting for a spirometry test. Every mouthpiece or spread that comes with the device is individually wrapped and is sterile, obviously. And the technique for using this to maintain that field, the sterile field, is to open it down the, the mark dotted line. <clears throat> and if you look at the spread itself, there's a V on it that matches a V in the front of the spirometer itself. So you just match those two pieces and you push it in all the way and leave the bag on just for a moment. And as you can see, if I was doing that for a patient, I haven't touched the mouthpiece itself, so I haven't contaminated it in any way. The NDD Easy On PC spirometer uses ultrasonic flow principles for its measurement of the airflow when the person blows into the device. And it's still recommended that you check, always check your calibration with a standard 3 liter calibration syringe, which is an accessory that's available with this. So that's a complete demonstration of the NDD Easy On PC spirometer. I want to thank you for letting us show that to you today.